welcome to Lang Dazzlius, learning the language of autism. I've been away for a few weeks um, because we moved home, and uh, it took us, or well, took me actually, a little more longer to settle um, into our new home than I had anticipated. So here I am, and this video I'm going to just talk a little bit about our experience of moving this time. Um, in history we've moved loads of times, um, we used to move like every one to two years, um, the last five years um, George and I have, have lived in the same house, so from his perspective he was nine um, and now he's 14, so you know, big gap and lots of growing and developing and changing, new routines, new <clears throat> grooves as I call them that he can get into. So I had no idea how this move was going to be for him um, and how he was going to cope and even if the same strategies that we used all those years ago would work for him. So, um, but the, because that was all I had, that was um, what I went with. So I just want to say before I say how it went for us and how it went for George is historically back when he was little, um, any change was difficult for George so you know if we were in the room lounge with him and if we you know if we were sitting down and then we stood up that would send him into an anxious state um, you know and he would he would really be upset and um, cry and scream and head bang and, and be very very distressed any change is so sensitive I'm eating in front of him um, he couldn't he couldn't cope with that either. It would make him gag and sick, um, and he would run away if anybody came to the house and hide. Um, going out was a challenge, but once we got him out in the car, if we were driving and then we stopped in traffic, it would send him into a, a spin again. Um, he'd want the car to keep moving, which I completely understand all of that reasoning behind that now, but didn't at the time. So everything for George of any change whatsoever was an intense challenge and difficulty for him. So fast forward now at 14 years of age, um, you know, he's, he's developed and changed so much as all children do, even autistic children, um, as they grow into and mature into adults, you know, they're still autistic, of course, and they still have their needs um but for us i can see how much george has learnt to um navigate himself around this world that he lives in and through repetition and allowing that repetition he has become comfortable and excel and thrive even in in most situations now which is wonderful it's taken us a long time but we haven't rushed um, and we've always gone at George's pace. So this move, <clears throat> which is just George and I um, living in the house and um, historically what we would do, was we would, because George wouldn't like going into people's houses, even friends' houses, he just wouldn't go through the door. He still doesn't like doing that now. Um, and he even gets a bit anxious about people coming to the house, um, well, the old house anyway. So it was, you know, it was always difficult. Buildings, um, strange houses, even if I took photographs of the outside of the house and the inside of the house, he would still find it um, unable to go in or want to go in. So I just didn't push the issue. Um, and um, rightly or wrongly, that's what... I chose to do so visiting friends would just be me at weekends and um, I wouldn't put George through that stress it was so stressful for him so this move um, I was going on the premise of that so the aim was that his dad would have him um, from a Thursday and I would get to move um, you know in four days and when I say move I mean everything pictures you know, curtains, everything is up, everything is sorted, not a box in sight. Um, George doesn't like changing the house either, so if there's boxes around and things that aren't unpacked and, and whatnot, he, it, it really does um, 
mess with him um, a lot and causes him a lot of distress. And because his home is his home, and you know, the one place I feel we all need to be free and be exactly who we are if we can't manage it anywhere else, whether we're a neurotypical or, or autistic. When you're at home, you are free to be you, and George is the same, and I feel very strongly about that. <clears throat> so, it's his sacred place, and his sanctuary, and his safe place. So, I got to it, and, you know, I was exhausted, but we ma I managed to do it, and then I would th then take photographs of the outside of the house, and then photographs of every single room in the house with all our stuff in it, all set up. And I would try and put things in places that were familiar in the old house. So the positioning of things, um, like particularly in his bedroom or everywhere in the house actually, um, I would I would kind of pretty much try and copy that as best I can in the new property, even though this is a bungalow and we used to live in a house. So I did that and then I would print them off and then I would take I take take them to his dad so he can have them on his little um, board, um, and then go to school with some pictures to go up on their board at school. And then I would pick George up with the photographs of the new house, and then take him to his new house, and you know hope that he would be okay. So that's exactly what I did. Um, and when I went to pick Georgie up at school. That Monday afternoon, um, his teacher told me that there were no pictures. His dad told me that he did take the pictures there, but somehow they got lost. So I, I wondered why I didn't get a call <laughs> from school to tell me this, because I could have taken more pictures, um, driven them to school and dropped them off. But that didn't happen. So what we had was a very unprepared George for this massive change in his life where there was no choice. You know, I, I, we had to live in this house. There was no going back to the old house. Everything that we owned and had was, was already here. So it was a pretty freaky experience um, for me, um, knowing what was coming for him. Um, I just felt for him so much. But there we were. So he, he managed really well with the different journey home, which usually he wouldn't. So that was different. He was kind of like, okay, we're going in a completely different direction. And I was obviously talking to him and I had some photographs in the car, but he just kept giving them back to me. So we got to the new house, we pulled up, he was fine. It was when I opened the car door to get him out that he decided, he was like, well, no, I'm not getting out. <laughs> you can get out if you like, I'll sit in the car. Um, so I left him to it for a while and um, obviously he was upset and confused. So I opened the door and I started bringing some of his stuff out and showing him that it was in the house and um, then just giving him some space. And then I got his school bag and I brought that into the house and that, um, you know, that caught his attention because he wanted to get his school bag back, but he couldn't bring himself to come into the house. So I just waited patiently and didn't bombard him with um, talking to him and giving him you know loads of other extra stimuli to, to listen to he was dealing you know with a lot of stuff already and I know that you know George likes the silence so <clears throat> I just sat and um, waited patiently and then he um, got up and he got out the car and he came into the house and to get his school bag and at that point was when I realised that I needed to shut the door um, so that he could stay in the house. Um, again, you know, I felt anxious about doing that because I didn't want him to feel locked in and like a prisoner. But I also knew the other option was that he would just sit out in the car for I don't know how long. It could have gone on for hours and hours and it was cold, it was getting dark. So that was the choice I made. And so I shut the door and I was very positive about it. And I was like, yay, you know. And um, George really, really, really got upset. And he you know, obviously wanted me to unlock the door. Um, and I was saying, come and have a look, come and have a look at the house and showing him things. And then I knew I just needed to leave him be for a bit. 
um, every now and then I would say, I know this is confusing, I know this is really hard, I'm sorry we didn't have photographs for you um, at school, that was a mistake, um, it was supposed to happen, but mostly I just stayed quiet because he was really at his most confused and distressed. So um, I just sat in the lounge and um, stayed as you know calm and um, tried to be as positive as I could in my own energy and and not you know match his anxiety. Stay strong, stay grounded. Let him know that it's okay and that I'm okay. So therefore he'll be okay. Um, this went on for quite a while, and then he got up and he looked around the house, the whole house whole bungalow and he was smiling and seeing his things so then I was going around with him and reassuring him then he went back to the door and got upset again then he would get up and then he would go back around the bungalow and look around again and then he would go back to the door and get upset and you know there are stages to the process of um you know aligning with a new idea and so and I know that now about him so um you just different waves I just wait Anyway, I sat in the lounge and eventually he came into the lounge and, you know, he was trying to get me up off the sofa and he wanted, he was basically saying, come on, let's go back to our old house, like get in the car and go. And I sort of told him that we couldn't do that and this was our new home now. And, um, oh, he was so distressed and he was so upset. And as I had been sat there with him for, you know, a good hour and a half, 45 minutes, an hour and 45 minutes, I could really feel his head was just like spinning. I started feeling sick because I think he was feeling very nauseous um, through the compressed uh, tension in his head. I could feel it was really intense. And I just said um, something like, oh, darling, I know it feels like your head is about to explode. And it was those words that he looked me right in the eye um, you know, which George does do, but not often. But he looked me right in the eye and he kind of dropped his shoulders and he was like, <sighs> as if to say, so you do know how I'm feeling. And um, saying that it was confusing wasn't enough for him. I needed to acknowledge how he was feeling physically as well as emotionally and mentally. Um, because George is a very physical um receiver of, of how he how he processes everything it's very very physical for him and um yeah and then he just got up and he got his school uniform off and put his dressing gown on and he got everything organized and he he settled and he ate and he had a bath and he was just he slept like he went to bed no problem and he slept all night long and woke up he was happy and ever since then he's been fine and it was that magic words of a, of validating his feelings, I think, um, that, that, that changed it. And I'm not sure that that would have worked, you know, when he was nine, but because he's 14 and hopefully because he trusts me, um, you know, we've built up a trust over the last 14 years and he knows that I always have historically, you know, kept him out of harm's way. And I've never put him in any danger or forced him to do anything. This was something I had no choice over. You know, we had to be here and we are living here. Um, so that was what was different. Um, in the two weeks that we've lived here, have I seen any changes in George? I would say that um, the first week, the first few days, nothing really. It was just you know, just in it and looking at all these new things and not his new things, they're his old things, but in this new place. And then I started to notice that um, the OCD and the need to recheck and recheck and recheck certain things. And, and, and he, George likes to touch things and bang things. That's me banging the table. Um, and he banging, not, not hard, but just he's very physical. So he does lots of lovely, beautiful movements and... Um, the way he is in the world, it's, it's beautiful, it's lovely. And I noticed that that was increasing. Um, he wasn't upset by it, he was just feeling the need to do it. So light switches would go on and off a little bit more and 
Of course, now he always wants me to lock the door when we come home because that's what we did the first time, so that's what we do. Um, but other than that, he's been like, once George gets something, he's in and he doesn't go back. He just is in the now, he moves on and he gets it and that is that. Um, and once he was here and he was home and, you know, we're in and settled, oh, the relief. I was so proud of him, um, knowing what an in incredibly huge change it is to move. Um, and he did it, you know, he, he did it. He, bless him, I mean, you know, an hour and 45 minutes of being upset and finding it difficult to adjust is no big ask, is it really? I mean, it was exhausting for him and incredibly stressful, but considering it was the biggest change in his life he's had in years, I think he did so, so well. So I'm just, even in the, I was so worried about it, but he did so, so well. I'm so happy. So I just wanted to share that with you all, um, to know that sometimes you have to ride these things through and um, when there is no choice and there wasn't, um, you know, in an ideal world, you know, to prepare him, come visit the house and choose the colour of your bedroom and all that stuff that, you know, you can do with neurotypical kids um, is in our way. And the way that we do it is the way that, um, well, if we'd have the pictures, of course, and that would have helped a lot. But because we didn't, if for whatever reason that didn't happen, it turns out that um, he turned it around and he coped really, really well. So that's our story of moving. And um, woohoo. I'm so thank you for listening to that. Um, now that I'm back, I'm going to do a little, next week's video is going to be a sort of just an update, a very small update on water drinking, because I've got some feedback from the autistic community. And then the weeks to come, I'm going to start do like a series. I don't know how long the series is going to be. I don't know many how many chapters are going to be in it, but it's going to be about toys and activities um, with autistic children. Um, it's a huge subject, so I'm going to try and break it down into some kind of <laughs> sensical way. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet, but I'm going to have a go. So that that's what's coming. So in the meantime, if you would like to subscribe um, by clicking on my little photograph and um, liking if you like, and um, then you'll get alerts as to when my new video is coming out. And, and as before, I'd like to do them once a week if I can, um, now that I'm back from our break. So, um, yeah, thank you for listening. And um, I'll just put up a couple of um, recent videos, the last couple that I did, just as a recap to remind you all, for those of you that haven't seen them, um, I did a, a food series that which, which was very comprehensive about the different senses and how food um, can be affected by the sensory processing and the sensitivities of our beautiful children. Um, thank you very much and I will um, see you soon.